Uwadiego is a state-tested nursing assistant. He was arrested this week and charged with gross sexual imposition. The Middletown man is accused of kissing, licking, and fondling the breast of a 79-year-old woman who was a memory care patient under his care. Detectives say they've now been in contact with several other potential victims, all senior citizens with either dementia or Alzheimer's, who were in Uadigo's care at multiple undisclosed assisted living facilities. So this is Investigator Raymond. I told you. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. How are you doing? Hey. You weren't in the scrubs again. You've still been working? Huh? Hey. You still been working or what? No. Is it just I, a... I'm always out to help you. You know, someone right. everywhere, the children and the water in case you want. Thank you. Well, how are you doing? We've been doing well. It's been really You're busy here lately. Now that COVID's kind of going away or whatever's happening, it's, <laughs> it's turned into now everybody's going back out and acting goofy again. So, um, but the one thing is that I have not been able to get my vaccine. I, think I, I, I can't understand. You can't get your what? My vaccination. Oh, well, yeah. Have you got yours? No, I'm not going to get that. So, <laughs> I'm going to wait a little while okay. and see what happens to everyone else. Why haven't you gotten it yet? Huh? Why haven't you gotten the vaccine yet? Um, I'm hearing a lot of, um, you know, voices that I'm not convinced yet. Yeah. I said, let me wait. Hmm? I mean, you worked correctly <coughs> around it for all that time. And, yes, you know, I have been, have been in COVID, you know, all the period. You're taking care of them and nothing happened to me. Right. Mm? And things like that. In that case, I said, Lord, I don't care. I, I trust you. Right. So I better, you know, go by your initiation and nothing. Right. That's all. Other than that, I think Investigator um, Raymond here is wanting to kind of go through. She's not heard all of the kind of story of what's going on. So we're probably going to step back and just kind of go through everything from the very beginning with you. Okay. Okay. So, mm. by the way, I did have the vaccine. You did? <laughs> well, yeah, you did, you, did you get both? I got the, the I got make you sick? No. You got nothing from nothing, it? Nothing, nothing really? from it. Is it yeah. like, uh, like, uh, could you talk to me on the phone? Yes. You said, uh, you know, I didn't pass a... Uh, yeah, so I got the results of the polygraph and, and I said you, you failed that test, you yeah. know? See? So that, and that's what I want to talk about is the reasons why and, and all that kind okay, of stuff. Please, uh, can you hear me out before we continue? Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm Julie Raymond with the Ohio Department of Health. Okay. okay. I work for abuse, neglect, and misappropriation okay. and exportation. Okay. So everything's correct. Okay. So which shift did you work at Traditions? What hours did you work? Night. Night. Okay, so is that 7P to 7A? Or do you do 12 hour shifts? 12 hour shifts. 7P to 7A then? Yeah. A lot of times you would come in earlier though, didn't you? Mm hmm? Didn't you come in earlier than 7 a lot of times? There is no particular appointment. I am not more than one hour early. All my life. So, so, so you come in at 6? I said earlier, even right. much earlier than the appointment. Okay. Because in the seminary, that is what we were, you know, okay. how I was trained. Because I thought there was times you'd worked from like three in the afternoon or something. Yeah, because uh, it's a kind of double shift. Explain that. Like 16 hour shift? 16 hour shift. Okay. Mm -hmm. From three, you know, to seven, seven, seven to, to seven. seven. Okay. You see the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Yeah. So, and especially that time, it was uh, really tough for everybody. The only person that was never afraid of COVID was me. Mm -hmm. I, I go to them, I embrace them, I carry them up, I lift them up, and all the rest of them. Because I know that uh, as missionary, this is what we are trained to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I walk differently because I walk from the heart, from the way I see situation. So I don't walk because I want to get a paycheck right. or wait for time to pass and things like that. So okay, yeah. um, on the the day in question, the day that we were talking about with.
what hours did you work that day? Did you come in at three? Did you do a 16 hour shift or a 12 hour? Yes, I think I did three to seven to because because I was there eh, when the lunch was, was served. Mm -hmm. Because the lunch is served five. In my English, I choose uh, sometimes wrong vocabularies compared with what Americans, uh, you know, you know. How many choose. languages do you speak? A lot. How because I have, I, have, I have been, you know, to 28 countries of the world. Okay. I think Mike is uh, almost about to, you know, yeah. be getting married. Uh, no, I understand you pretty yeah. well. Like, so, I don't, I don't. Mm -hmm. so okay. let's continue. Okay. So tell me, tell me about that shift. So tell me about the three to um, seven shift that day. Kind of just run me through what you what you did. You don't have to go into like a lot of little details, but I wanted to know how you how you um you and um. Mm -hmm what you did for her that day, um, what you did for the COVID resident. Um, uh, who, what was the COVID resident's name? Do you remember? The Because um, they only had a couple COVID residents. See? Was it, yeah. In the beginning, that was the time this issue happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is one, is not a COVID special. Right. But he, 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 her, this had um, her apartment or her room is close, you know, to uh, the former hall. Okay. The former hall, the the seal with the plastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I have been dealing with the uh, how do you call it? How do you pronounce? Yeah. Mm. She has been having problems. Sometimes when she lock her door, going out, mm, jam the door, because there is a way tradition door is. Mm -hmm. If you turn something inside, you jam it, it will lock. If you try to open it, it will not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of the times she run into that problem. I, who I have the key because the key is given to this, you know, to the workers. Mm? Okay. So I help not only her, mm? most of them. There's only one key. There's only one key. There's not the one key, but it is the key outside. Yeah. It at least uh, provided for the eggs. And it's on like a, a phone, piece of foam or something. It's like got a piece of foam that the key is on, so you don't. Yes, it. you know, just a foam to to make it you know visible, available. Right. Yeah? Because it is a tiny key. Okay. And mm -hmm. there's only one key for one all of, the aids. Of all the aids. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the nurses have theirs because the nurses are the ones that have the keys. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we use it, if we use it, we keep it somewhere that. Uh, Whoever has a problem will always say, uh, you know, go there and seek for it. If you cannot, you call a nurse okay. to come and open the door. So this is the situation. Then, uh, what was the question again? Uh, tell me about your um, interactions with the day. That in okay. Question. I have been interacting with her all the while I have been there. Hmm? Given her a lot of, uh, you know, friendship, you know, comfort. When she cries, and uh, sometimes I will be, I will be there. She opens her door and uh, start talking to me and uh, waving to me. When I, when I, I come to her, then I ask. He said uh, she didn't, uh, you know. Eat food, or she. I say, are you hungry? She says she's hungry. I say, okay. Why don't you, you know, get a snack? And they just say, say she has no snack. Mm -hmm. Then I went into her room and I saw that she has no snack. So either I go search for the snacks and bring to her. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, now is this on the day the day we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just just tell me about that, the day. That particular day, she went. Uh, I think after lunch, after after dinner. Dinner, okay. So she came. The okay. first, she came and that you know door was locked. Mm -hmm. I opened it. Okay, was she coming? Was she in the apartment and came out and locked herself out, or was she? somewhere else and was going into the apartment. When she finished lunch from the dinner, she came, hmm? she walked around. The second time she came, she wants to enter the apartment. Okay, but what time's dinner? I think the dinner was uh, five. At five, okay. Okay, then uh, uh, I think the dinner from five proceed it depends uh, how slow many people eat and things like that. Mm. So when you know she came back, okay. mm, that was the time I I help her open the you know the door. Mm. First of all, she says she doesn't know what to do. I said the best thing is that you have to get yourself organize, you know, watch television. She said that she doesn't like, you know, she doesn't like the channels. Hmm? She likes. I said, okay. okay, where is your remote? Let me help you. Hmm? Let me help you find the remote, the channels you like. Then we sat, this is bad. Hmm? She sat here, I sat there, and the television is there. Hmm? So I was using that uh, remote to mm -hmm. search for, you know, the channels until I got to the channels that is uh, just a kind of baby, you know, a big channel that, what is that, animation or something like that. Cartoons. The cartoons. Mm -hmm. So she thanked me a lot. Many times I, I got her in a depressive ways. Mm -hmm. I give her a hug, you know, talk to her. Sometimes, you know, I help her, you know, to lie on the bed. I sat beside, the, you know, the bed. I said, can we pray? Hmm? Then I, I pray with her, things like that. Then uh, help her cover up and leave. Okay. But the one thing was my mistake, but I don't care because I was following my heart was that in that her situation, she's not a COVID you know, patient and they expect me not to attend to a COVID you know, patient, but she inclined in my health well, were there other, I saw that there were other aides working that day. Because you were not assigned to. I, was, I wasn't assigned to her. No, you were assigned to the COVID patients, correct? I was assigned to COVID patients. Okay. Did you take your stuff off before you went in the room? No. Okay. So you, you increased your chance of becoming, of getting COVID by doing that. Because the protocols from the, or from our department, Ohio Department of Health, you should not have been going into any other residence room with all of your COVID. If you went into a COVID room and came out, you were supposed to take that all off before you interacted with any other resident. Now, I'm just saying that I'm just, I'll let you continue, but I just want to let you know that yeah, because the I, facilities still have COVID. So if you do go in, a, if you are working and you go in a facility. What, where did I stop? Your a mistake. Well, I think you were talking yeah, yeah, about I thought, I'm talking about yeah. a mistake because one thing I, I'm I have, you know, two things controlling me. Eh? What I should do, you know, as, you know, rules, principles, and things like that. And what I see with my heart, that the person right there with me as a human being needs. Eh? Okay. That's where I have struggles. Okay. Mm? Okay. So when that, you know, happened, then I came out and continue, you know, my round. When I came out, 
I thought she, I think she was the one hmm, that got out of the, out of the, the, the her room. Eh? And she waved for me like she does always when she needs my attention. And was that the time she was waving for you? Uh, the, the, the time she was waving, waving for me, I, I didn't jump and start going there. Because I had to uh, change my, uh, you know, apron and things like that. So when I later, you know, went in there, one thing I didn't know, and uh, I said it before, that I opened the door. But it, it sounds, I am not so sure whether I went in, but one thing that happened to me that day, I don't know. I ate the food of that day, you know, from the facility. And I was having, you know, runny stomach. And personally, as my hereditary something, I have a, this, uh, you know, pile, uh, you know, pie. Hmm? Then it came to me, you know, the way that, uh, if I have a running stomach, you know, running, running stomach, if I don't, you know, go, I may even go on, you know, on myself. So when I get into, uh, you know, this thing to get the sanitizer, mm -hmm. I picked, and I was already lie down, on the, you know, on the bed. So, when I had that pressure, mm -hmm. I decided to ease myself. And it is one thing I don't supposed to do. I admit my mistakes and my errors. But if I don't do it that time, mm -hmm. I think I will do it on myself. And I never knew that uh, these things will be discovered. So I had to, you know, ease myself there. Then when I finished, by the time I finished, I tried to make sure that I put, I clean everything, uh, everything to make sure that nothing, like nothing happens. But I was so unlucky, so unfortunate. By the time I could finish that, and take my sanitizer. Hmm? The nurse came for Miriam. Okay. So you were unfortunate that the nurse came at that time? Yes, okay. it was very, very unfortunate for me. Okay. Hmm? Because if I had known that I would be discovered, hmm? uh, maybe, probably, uh, I would have do done it on myself. Well, where's the, where's the closest restroom outside? Did you, when you, when you change your outfit, do you do you put that one in the hallway? In a hallway? At, do you see what I'm saying? Where do you change? Where do you change your, your, and put your scrubs on? Where do you put the COVID stuff on? Where do you do that? I did it down, you know, where I am. Down down the hall? Down by the chair that you were sitting in? Uh, that, that is in the, because it is in the other, uh, other, you know, um, Oh, that box. Okay. Uh, I've forgotten you know, their you, you, name. You went in that room when you first got there. Hmm? That when you first came into work, you went in that room beside the chair. What room? Is that an empty patient's yeah, room? Yeah, I always keep my things there. Okay, and that's an empty patient's room. An empty patient's room. Which has a bathroom in it. It has a bathroom. Okay. Hmm? It has a bathroom and the, there was a, a residence there. And then that is where you put your your COVID stuff on, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then Muriel's room's down here, right? Like down the hallway. This is the chair. And then your COVID, you've got, is it? That is down here with the COVID patient. She's on this hall and on that hall. Yeah. Okay. All right. You see, okay, go ahead. Someone would, you know, say, why, when you're press, why not? You know, go and do it in that room. Hmm? But the, the kind of pressure I have and what I come to do to see 
didn't make, didn't give me that thinking to go, and I couldn't make it going back there. Okay. So and you went to the room to get your hand sanitizer? Yeah, then. Why did she motion for you? I don't know. That's what I would have found out after I have eased myself. Because she, she was in bed when you got in. Yes, yes, she was in bed. Okay, so she she motioned for you to come down. You get up to go down, and she, goes, did, she, and she goes in and goes to bed? Yeah. Okay. When she, you know, she motioned me, I had to, you know, change my, you know, my apron and things like that. Okay. The time factor and all the rest of it, when I went, I saw her, I peeped her because I didn't see, I peeped her, she was lying on the bed. Mm? Then I had that pressure. Then I decided to use myself, finish my day, take my sanitizer, and know, you know, why she motioned to me. Okay. Okay. So that before, and that, that was what I never got the chance before the, the nurse came. Okay, so then the nurse came. Who let the, did let the nurse in? Mm -hmm. Did it she was, open the door for the nurse? It was that let the nurse in while I was in the toilet. Okay, do you know the nurse's name? No, one black dog. Okay, mm -hmm. real short hair. Josephine. Okay, yeah. Josephine. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, Josephine. okay. Um, and then so that kind of was then when... You you came out of the room then when, well, when the nurse you know, went all back? The, because all my, we she was entering the you know entering the toilet hmm? and I was so disturbed hmm? probably she noticed I you know I did something because you know things like that even though I tried to clean everything you know so I was a kind of ashamed. I was a kind of disturbed. I was a kind of everything. So I left. Okay. Then what did you do when you left? I left and continue doing what I supposed to do. And even um, there was somebody I met, uh, I think a patient I met, you know, on the way. Then okay. we were talking. Okay. Did you go back into your room after that? After that. After that incident, when, after you came out, the rest of your shift, did you go back into Muriel's room for anything? No, because um, even when that person I was talking to, we were, you know, going this and then I, I saw, you know, right on the front of the door talking with somebody. I said, how are you doing? You know, what, any problem? And he said, no. Okay, so you, you didn't have any conversation with her? <clears throat> that, with just to ask her how she's doing, like I do always. Okay. Then I pass on. All right. So did you hang out in that hallway any later? Or did you just go back to your checking on your COVID patients? Uh, that I cannot remember, you know. Because when I, I, you know, I think, uh, I can't it's remember. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay if you don't remember. It's okay. Yeah, I don't remember what I did, uh, but uh, I continued uh, doing what I supposed to do. Your work. But okay. in my work. But I don't know exactly what I did at that time. Okay. Okay. So that was all your interaction with? With um yes, okay. that's that's all the inter inter interaction with her. Okay, all right. Um, you know, as I said at the beginning of the interview, I'm not. I won't come talk to you again about about the situation. Okay, and with our with our office, um, honesty is the best policy. It gets you further than trying to cover up what you did. You know, if we know that you're being honest and upfront with us. So I'm going to go back through what you said, okay, and then ask you questions about it, okay? Because a lot of times when we ask you stuff, we already know the answers, okay? So what if I told you that sitting on the resident's bed and holding their hands or hugging them or kissing them 
will get you in more trouble than using a residence restroom. Okay. Um, going in a residence room that does not have COVID with dirty COVID stuff on, because I watched several videos, you never changed your, your outfit that night. I would have seen it. Okay, because I, I have video of you sitting in that chair. That would also, that would pretty much get you fired. Okay, because of, we're in a pandemic. The, the, they're very strict with the nursing homes. Because you know how many residents in nursing homes passed away from it. Okay. So, why didn't you tell the facility you used the restroom? Because all of those other things would have gotten you in worse trouble. Okay. And you said you were unfortunate. Okay. Um, another thing, the video shows you with your hand sanitizer the whole night. So by you saying you went into room to get your hand sanitizer, I know you didn't. You were sitting in the chair when she waves to you, and that hand sanitizer was on your waistband. Okay. Um, did you have the key originally when, when she waved for you to go down? And you remember, and you, and you said, well, you were going to go down anyway to get your hand sanitizer. Did you have the key with you? Yeah, I don't. Okay. Did you already have it on you, or did you have to go get it? Did you have to get it? It's okay if you don't remember. I mean, I, I know what you did. I mean, I know how you, waves for you. You start to get up. When you get up, your hand sanitizer is hanging on your your tie. And I have two. I have two. I have two hand sanitizer. Well, I've, I only saw one the whole thing on every hallway you were in. There was only one. Then you hesitate going to a room. You turn and get the key out of the, the plastic container. And you take the key down. But you go straight in the room. You didn't use the key. So why would you take the key with you? That I had the key? You, you, got, you went, we're going to go to this room, but the key was not on your person. Okay? You didn't have it because sometimes you carry it in that waistband. You didn't have it in there. It was in the plastic container where it belongs so that... If you're taking care of a residence and another residence locked uh, out. If you flip the switch on the side, it will silence it. There you go. Okay. So why why did you stop to get the key to go to Muriel's room? She motions for you. And when you went down there, you went straight in. It wasn't, she didn't lock it herself out of the room because she came out of the room in her nightgown. She had a nightgown on. So why did you why did you hesitate and then turn and take the key get the key and take it with you? Wow. Wow. Did you not want anyone coming in the room? Uh -huh. did, did you not want anyone having the key to enter that room while you were in there? Did I have to knock? Well, the nurse had to knock because the door was locked. Yeah, and you had the key. And you had the key. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So but that was in the toilet. But you didn't know that when you first went down there because it hit you like that that you had to go to the bathroom. Otherwise, you would have used the toilet right next to you. Because uh, it is the time it hit me. But that, 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 that doesn't explain why you took the key with you. The key that's supposed to stay in that divider tote, the plastic tote, sitting right next to the chair you were in. You're sitting in the chair. It's sitting next to you. You stand up. You start to walk down towards the room. Then you stop, and you go, and you get the key, taking it with you. The only reason why you would take that key with you is so that no one else had access to that key. 
because the room was open, motioning for you, she clearly had her door open, was standing in the doorway of it, so there was no need for you to take that key other than to prevent Josephine or any other nurse or nurse's aide from getting that key and just coming in the room on you. Because oh, the no. only way to get in that room was oh, with no. that key. Oh, no. That one I have to clear it up. Because it is my habit. Mm -hmm. Whenever I'm moving on, mm -hmm, I used to take the key with me. Whether I'm using it or I'm not using it. I didn't take it for any ulterior motive use or thinking what you say. That, that's not accurate. Um, I've I seen you walking the halls without that key numerous times. That, that's not accurate. You see, the point is this, that uh, I do the things I do. Mm -hmm. I don't have premeditated reasons why I do them. Do you understand? You just have urges? Mm -hmm. Compulsions. That is it. I just do it the way it comes to me. Maybe if I don't take it, either I forgot to take it, or like you you said, if I take the key, mm, it means my interior intention is that uh, so that nobody comes in, you know, you know, to unlock the door. No. I can assure you about that. That wasn't the intention. That wasn't the intention. Because I always carry the key with me anywhere I am. That's, that's not true. See, so I've sat here and I've listened to you. And me and you talked before. And I've heard your, your version of what happened. And now I'm up to about version three. <clears throat> what has happened is you gave your original story. And your original story was that you went into the room to help her with her TV. Then you changed your story. That was the first time. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I've allowed you to talk. Then you, you changed your story to, oh, no, um, I went in to help her because she locked herself out of her room after lunch. And when I went there to let her in, I helped her with her TV then. And that's when I wash my hands and I leave my hand sanitizer sitting in her bathroom after I wash my hands. That story makes sense. Then, after we confront you with, hey, how come you're in here for, what was it, 22 minutes in the room just to go in and get your hand sanitizer, then that's when you say, oh, slipped my mind, but you know what? I had this strong stomach pain, this pressure, as you called it, and said that you had to go to the bathroom. You had to poop. You had to go number two, whatever you want to say. You needed to, to do, you had a runny bowel movement. So you then tell us you use the bathroom, and then that's why you don't answer the door when you hear the knocking and Josephine is out there, um, and you go with that. Then we confront you with the fact now that the spray bottle, the hand sanitizer that you're claiming you went back there to get, you had the entire time. You had that with you from the time you had come out of her room the first time, because you were in there originally the first time. When you went down to her room, you stood up, you took that key out, you didn't need that key. There was numerous times you never carried that key with you. And maybe it was something that you always wanted to do, but you also knew that key was supposed to stay there for the other aides and the other nurses to be able to get residents in or get into their rooms if they need be. That's where that key is kept. That's not a key that's assigned to you. If they're not here, God bless, this is your key. That is a key for the facility, for that wing, for them to get into that room if they need to, if someone locks themselves out, or if someone's having an emergency and they need to get into them. That's what that key is there for. It's not for you to carry around. You take that key with you and your hand sanitizer, and you stroll right down that room and you go in that room. Once you're in that room, you didn't have to go to the bathroom told us what happened in there. She told us about you laying with her. She told us that you two had a relationship. She told us that she likes you, that you bring her snacks, which is something you've mentioned over and over again, that you bring her snacks, that you talk to her, that you're there for her, her that you hug her. We go through the first version of this, and you say that you've consoled her before. 
I watched your interview when you went for your polygraph and you talked to Nadia, and when you're there with Nadia, you tell her that you've kissed her before, that you've kissed her. Right? Do you remember that? Yeah, I've kissed her. With my, you know, with my... With your mask on? With the mask on. Is well, that still something that you should ever be doing with a resident in, in, inside a memory care facility that you're supposed to be taking care of? Should you be kissing... Those residents. No, no, just kiss on the head. No, Is that's he... not what you said. No, no, no. So listen. So what happened here? God bless. And I, I understand. I, I know. I know what's going on. I, I know what's happened. You went in that room. She motioned for you, and you went in that room, and you two have a sexual relationship. There's no doubt. You can keep shaking your head. There's no doubt in my mind that you do. I fully believe she is consensual on it. I believe the two of you have a relationship. I believe that you're petrified about your wife or anybody else knowing or looking down on you because I believe that you're that God-fearing man and you try and do everything right. But I also know that you're a man and you have these compulsions and you have these urges just like every other person out there. And when you have this woman who you care about that is there with you, that is willing, that is laying with you, and wanting to do things with you, I know what happened. I guarantee you used a condom, and you had intercourse with her. I've talked to her. She's not as bad of a memory care patient as what you think. You would only worked there for about a month. you have been there actually exactly a month, because you started on December 23rd, and that was on January 23rd. You had been there exactly a month. She was able to tell me, and I've talked to her, that you two have had that sexual relationship. Now, I get it. At first, you lied to me, and then you said, well, I'm not proud about it, and you were lying about going to the bathroom in a room. What you're doing is you're using that as a good excuse, you think. Oh, I'll tell them this because I shouldn't do this. It gets me in a little bit of trouble, but not anything big, and nobody looks down on me or thinks poorly of me. But what actually happened when you went in that room, when she motioned for you, and you went down there, you went in, and you and her were having intercourse. And then what happened, when you heard that knock on the door, you went in the bathroom, and you were hoping that they would leave. And then, no doubt in my mind, you either flushed or you got rid of the condom that you were using. You got rid of the stuff. And the reason why I know this is because... You're smart enough to know not to get caught with that. You know how I know that you're smart enough to not get caught with that condom? Because back in November of 2018, you were right down the street here by Chick-fil-A at the Sheridan of Mason. And you were working there. And you were working there on a night with Shantae and another girl and two other black women. One's a head nurse and one was another STNA or an assistant. And while you were working... Where did you say when? November 18th. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. November of 2018. I believe it was actually November 13th. I'm, I'm going off of memory. Yeah. Right. Where? Where? the 13th. Where? Where did The Sheridan. Sheridan of Mason. It's right by Chick-fil-A on Mason Montgomery Road. That's where you worked. I don't think there's any other God bless, whatever your last name is, like mm -hmm. you pronounce. Okay. It's out there. And you were working there then, and they found you. You were out in the common area after you had just been found in another resident's room that was completely naked, and you knelt down in front of her, and you claiming that she had soiled herself when there was no soiled diaper, depends, whatever it was she had. There was no cleaning supplies. There was no nothing. And you were caught by the head nurse in that room when she went in, kneeling down in front of this, this woman, maybe... It was right before you had done something. Maybe it, you had already finished. I'm not sure on this because, unfortunately, they didn't report it to us. But what I do know for a fact is just a short time after that, you were in the common area, and you know what fell out of your pocket? What fell out of your pocket? I've seen that little smirk. What fell out of your pocket? Tell me. What fell out of your pocket? God bless. Say it. And that was a, you know, the, the condom, you know, that was That was a condom packet. Yep. Yeah. And it was an open one, right? And then, no, 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 no. And then they take that. They, they can try and get that from you. And you become combative with them and say, you can't question me. You don't have that authority to, to ask me about that. And then you tell them some story about how you're wearing your son's pants. 
Yeah. That is a total lie. Total lie. Those aren't your son's pants. I listen to your polygraph. You don't even have a son that's here around where you would have those pants. That is a bullshit lie. That's what that is. All it is is you lying to try and cover up what you're doing. And what you're doing, you, you've got a sickness. I, I think that there's something that compels you to do this. I think that you don't like it. You don't like this about you. You know why I know this? Because you love coming to talk to me. Do you know why? Because you want help. That's what you want. No matter what, I can call you and say, hey, come and see me. And what you do today, you were in Kentucky when I talked to you yesterday. You drove back up. I said, will you come up here and talk to me again? What would you do? You came right here. Why would you come here? Because you want help. You want this to stop. And you can't do it on your own. Can you? You've tried, haven't you? You've tried. You've tried to do it on your own. But you can't do it, can you? What you want is you want help. That's it. But you're too afraid to ask for it. What you do every time you come here is you're asking for us to help you stop doing what you're doing. Because you know that it's not right. Right? So what can we do to help you? Because I've got a whole list of other residents, other places, Twin Towers, the main viral Otterbein, and that's not a memory care patient, where you have done these inappropriate things, and you come in here because you know you need help to stop doing them, right? Sticking your fingers up inside of Every time you wiped her, she's a woman that's in a wheelchair, you always want to take her to the bathroom at Mainville Otterbein. These are all the things that I know. And here's what I'm trying to do for you, God bless. I want you to start from the beginning, and I want you to tell me the truth. And then I'll help you. But if you lie to me, I'm not going to. I'm not going to help you. You always ask me, you say, Brother Man Mike, help me. Right? That's what you say. Who asked for help? You're asking. I never got it. I wasn't smart enough to pick up on it. Every time on the phone, you would say, right before we hung up, what's the last thing you would say? Brother, man, Mike, help me, right? That's the exact phrase you would say every time. Yeah. And I never caught on that you were, I thought you were just being overly nice and God-loving man. I never caught on and never clicked that, oh, shit. He's asking me to help him. That's what you're doing. You're asking me to help you. You know what? Today's the day I'm going to help you. So what I want to do is get the truth so that I can help you. I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of listening to it. I'm tired of all of these lies. And you are too. You're, 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 you're done with it. But you're obviously not able to fix this on your own. Something is making you where you want to do this and you can't stop. I, I don't know what that is, but we can find the right people to, to get you guided to. But we've got to make it stop because what's happening, you know as well as I do, is not appropriate. So the lies, I hate it. I hate lies. And I've listened to te you tell me so many of them about how this went down. I've got the videos. We've watched these videos over and over again of everything that's happened in these facilities because they keep all these videos and you're it just you're you're telling lies. So are you ready to let us help you? Are you going to continue to try and lie? Listen to me and hear me out. I don't know why all these things are happening, but one thing I can assure you: I have never had sexual intercourse. See, that's a lie. So you're lying. You're lying. You're absolutely lying. You're a liar. I hate liars. You're lying. What you're doing right now is lying. You absolutely had sexual intercourse. I talked to her that night. She told me what you did. She is not lying. She doesn't have the capability to make up a lie. She's like a small child. She can't make up lies. Who can? You. And if you continue to lie, what that does to me is it makes me feel like you're nothing but a predator.
You're nothing but a deviant predator who wants to do nothing but prey upon weak, innocent people who can't defend themselves. That infuriates me. That makes me so mad when there's people that do that. So stop lying to me and tell me the truth. I know the truth, which is you have a relationship with me. I get it. And I guarantee you, because I don't know the other women as well, but I guarantee you, you probably brought them snacks. You probably were there for them. You probably prayed with them. You probably listened to them. You developed a relationship with them. Each and every one of them. Because you know why you got into this? You know why you started doing this to begin with? The whole reason in 2014 you became an STNA was to do what? Was to help people, right? Yes. That's what you wanted to do. And that's what you're trying to do. And then you know what happens? You start helping these people and you develop this relationship. All of a sudden, now you're not just, oh, I'm helping this person. Now you've got feelings for them. And then they develop feelings for you. And then you end up doing something that you think, man, I shouldn't be doing this, but you both are happy. She's happy. You're happy, right? But nobody can find out because then if they do, then you get in trouble. You get in trouble with your licensing. You get in those kinds of trouble, right? That's what you're afraid of. Stop lying to me. If you want help, if you want my help like you've asked me every time I've talked to you, then stop lying and just say, you know what? I had a relationship with her. Yes, she liked me. and I, You know what she told me? She said, he likes me and I like him. So stop lying and tell the truth. I'm not going to your wife or whatever you're concerned about. I just want to know that this woman is not a liar. She knows what's going on. And I don't want you to be a predator. Are you a predator? Are you some kind of evil monster? No. Some demon that's taking advantage of people? Are you somebody who just loved her too much and you started to have feelings and you did things that people who have feelings about each other do? Which is it? Are you a monster? Are you not? Which is it? I am not. I'm one step. Okay. So then tell me about the relationship and stop lying. Don't lie. Come on. You want to lie, aren't you? You know what my mom used to tell me? Yeah. When I was little, she used to say, tell the truth as fast as you can so you don't have time to think of a lie. That's something that's a good, to live by. A good tell the truth as fast as you can so you don't have time to think of a lie. Because you know what? When people lie, it's hard. You've got to think about it. You've got to try and relive it. I watched you sit here and struggle. I bet your stomach is so upset right now. I bet you're hurting inside. And you know what? I sit back here and I try to just keep my mouth shut and stay back. I'm like, it's okay. He'll, he'll, he'll be honest here in a minute. But I listened to you lie when you were telling her your story. I listened to your lies and I go, I can't take much more of the lies because this man here, he's wearing his God is good all the time. He's wearing his Jesus stuff. He's wearing all of the, every time I've seen you. And you've come in and I'm like, why is he, why is he doing all of this? Unless, and it never clicked until just a little while ago. And I go, he really wants my help. He really wants my help because they yes, do. And, I, and, and I'm trying to help you, but I'm not going to help a liar. I, because somebody that's going to sit here across from me and lie to me like that, that's that's an evil person. That's an evil person who's trying to, to decorate themselves in something they're not. So if you're, if you're not an evil person, stop lying to me. Be honest with me. And I'll respect you. I'll love you again. And I'll help you. You got me? Yeah. So tell me about the relationship with me. When did it start? Right away? Or what? When when did it happen? In the process of all this, you are absolutely right. That certain things you feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. It happens. And why it happens and how you get into it or carried away you know, to do it. You see? Yeah. And looking at uh, whatever will probably be the consequence. 
scary is scary. And you look at the dependence on you. Hmm? By your family? The family, the marriage, the things that we go wrong, and everything, it looks like you are in the hell already. Yeah. And all that. So, if I'm lying, It is all this. I understand. That's why you're lying, is because you're because worried about all of those things. And all, the, all these things, because I can't imagine. What kind of life do you want to have where you just, you're going to have to try and lie and hide this stuff from everyone who depends on you? Wouldn't they respect you more if you just told the truth and said, listen, I had this relationship. I'm certain that your wife, if she's had breast cancer and suffering from it, she's probably not wanted to have any type of sexual interactions. I, I know that. The medications that they're putting her on, they completely shut her down. The medications that she's probably taking for treatment of breast cancer will probably make her to where she can't even have an orgasm. So why would she even want to have intercourse if she can't have an orgasm? Plus all of that. You're a man, and now you're working with other people who depend on you, just like family, who you care about, who you're there with, and you fall in love with those people. You're, you're a man of love. That's what you're going to do. The, the very first time I met you, you told me you loved me, and I spit. You told me I love you, like, four times. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I'm like, who says that? And I thought so you were, I thought you were just some guy just acting like it. But I feel like, like you were like yeah. you did. No, no, no. Yeah. Acting like a a fake, like you just say it all the time to anybody. But I feel like you truly care about us. Yeah. I do. I think that you easily fell in love with Muriel. That that's what I think. You see, like I even told uh, you know, what was the name of the uh, Traditions. Oh, Nadia. Nadia. I so much like because she appeals to me to the way she's clean, clean in the in the no. sense that everything in her, me, in her me, home yeah. is in order, all arranged, yes. and everything absolutely, and that. Hmm? And she tugs on your heart heartstrings because she needs you, right? In fact, she said, she even told me hmm, that how she wish she would always see me every time. Okay? But the point that gets to, you know, to me is that uh, the comfort and the friendship I give to her, get her back from depression. Yes. You know, try to wanting to to leave, try to wanting to you know uh, to express you know herself and all the rest of them. Yeah. You see, there is a, there is a game, you know, the devil plays it. Oh. Yeah. You know, on someone, you know, regarding <clears throat> the things. You are going to lose the things, the problems you are going to confront, you know, and all these things. And I think that is why, you know, the Bible call him father of all lives. Hmm? And the, this is exactly. And <clears throat> myself, I supposed to even know better. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But I know that I am not a criminal, no. and I have never committed any crime. You're 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 not raping in the sense of you you're not hurting these people. You're not doing anything like that. No. That's that when people hear these kinds of things, and they think of someone that's a criminal. They think of someone who's doing some kind of violent, forceful thing. No, you're not. You're not. No. You're laying with someone who you care about and who cares about you. There is a huge difference in that.
That's but the point is that the one of the other this in uh, the one what uh, said uh, there is a facility where they you know where they said you know Wagner where you when you would wipe her which is that um, it was at Otterbein of Mainville you worked there in 2020 um, and you were there up until September of 2020 and then you got asked to leave after she felt in, that you were making inappropriate comments to her and you were touching her, her inappropriately. You mean at the Mainville? Mainville, yes. Okay. Yeah. I talked to all of these okay. people. That's, see, that's why. My they, listen to me. You know, you talk of the truth. Because when you start speaking, I'm not hearing your voice. I'm hearing the Lord's voice. Do you understand? Yeah, you're hearing the what? The Lord's voice. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that one of there, you said, eh? it is not true. That's not true. That okay. is not true. Okay. Okay? Okay. That's it. I, I tell you what, I will believe you. I Listen, I will believe you once... You tell me about the other things that I that I know are true, and we talk about them, and I know that you're being truthful because I need to know that you can be honest with me about the things that I know you're lying about. I know that. You so see, you on January twenty third, you I, laid with her like and had intercourse. Hear me out. Of all the <clears throat> of all the people that I have been <clears throat> a caregiver, I have never had. A, Access or feelings or taking undue advantage of anyone. You're not taking advantage of her when she has feelings for you and you have feelings. You see. So, so you're using those words because you're an intelligent man. You speak multiple you see, languages. I know. See, I, I guess. See, that. in this is issue now, I respect you. I respect you a lot right now mm -hmm. for the fact that. When I ask you for help, I don't think you take it, you know, lightly. I don't. Okay. Then in this, you have to believe me. The only place you have to, you get me properly, you can say, I'm lying. Mm? And I am telling you the reason why. Mm? Is in the case of but every other one, nothing, any, any time. So you're telling me the only time you ever did anything was with none of the others. None of the others. None of the others are true. N Look, if you come now to bring the word truth, you got to bring your heart of believing me. So... How many times, how long was this relationship with her? Be honest with me. How many times did you and her have a, the sexual intercourse of some type? How many times? Number one. I never had sexual intercourse. Getting my, my penis into a vagina or taking my penis into her mouth or something like that. That never happened. That is not true. But tell me, tell, let me tell you, tell, let me tell you. The only thing I did is when she hugged me, hmm, I rubbed her breast. Hmm? I kissed her breast. She can tell you this, obviously. She told me about that. She told me okay, about that. Okay, I kissed her breast. But uh, Penis to vagina, penis to the mouth. Listen, do you know that? You want to talk about that? The penis and her mouth. You know that she never even did that. The, you were, she was, she was, she told me, she goes, I'm so ashamed. And I said, why? What do you have to be ashamed of? And she said, I hadn't, I've, I've never done that before. I've, I've never done that. And I was like, you've never done what? No. And she said that was one of the things she had not done. I, I, listen, My, if you want me to believe you, 
about Mainville, about Twin Towers, and about the Sheridan. If you want me to believe you that the only time you've had any type of romantic or, I don't know even another word to do, to, to say, sexual contact with Wait. a resident. No, no. And you want me to believe the only person that's ever been has been then you have to be honest about what happened. Listen, you and I both know she is pretty good. And she is, when I even went there, I asked them, I said, how is she? And they were like, she's pretty sound of mind. Um, and you just got to catch her on the right days. And she, when I talked to her, it was that night. You had just left the building. It was a Saturday night. You had just left the building. They had just left, asked you to leave. Or I would have spoke to you and talked to you that night. We would have met then. And it was the first time, and it was right after that. And what she told me, that's what happened. You laid next to her. You had vaginal intercourse with her. I know it, and you know it. Okay. And listen. Can you explain to me what the vaginal intercourse means? Your penis and her vagina. That is not true, Mike. If you want to believe the truth, believe this truth. Don't believe what you want, what you think. Tell me what the truth is, because you've been lying a lot. No, no, it's not. I have been lying. lying. I told you, now we are in the face of the truth. Okay. I told you what. Oh, tell me the damn truth. The damn truth is that <clears throat> my penis never entered the vagina of no her mouth. Did you put it in her anus? I knew, no. God is my witness. That's not true. Don't say that. That's not true. Listen, you, you ask me for help. You keep asking me for no, help. No, no, no. No, no. You keep lying. You keep lying. No, no. It's not Mike, true. It's Mike, not no. true. It is not true. It is you who is lying this time. No, no, no. It is you who is no, lying this time. You're, you're telling me that you're lying about this relationship and how much she cares about you. The relationship, I love you. You're lying. You're asking no, me. No, Mike, lying. listen yes. to me. No. Listen to I'm, me. I'm not going to listen to a demon. I'm not going to listen to somebody who's going to lie and be like that. I'm not going to do it. You, what you're doing now is lying. So what it tells me, if you're going to lie about this, then everything that happens... No, 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 everything that happens... No, do, do you know all the happened. problem here? Do you know the problem here? Yeah, the problem is... No, 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 no. The problem is that you're ashamed. I understand. And then all the other part of the problem is you have a wife who you also love and you're supposed to take care of. And you have... Like 10 kids, right? Eight, yeah. 10 kids? You have all of these people who you don't want to let down. Yeah. And what you have done lets them down. And as soon as you admit it and say, this is what I've done, now you know you've let them down. Yeah. And you are not a big enough man right now. You're big enough to ask for help, mm -hmm. but you're not big enough and strong enough to get help. All you're willing to do is beg for help and then not take it when it's right in front of you. All you're willing to do is try and sit there and cower away from the truth and what really happened. And that's what you're doing. No, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm done with the lies. No, no. Lying. You and her had sexual intercourse. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in her mind. She had a relationship with you, and you're lying about it. Stop lying to me. Mike. We haven't even Mike, gotten into this. Mike, chair. listen to me. The discrepancies in this issue now is that you are saying that my penis get into her vagina and my penis get into her mouth. That is not true. Then why would she say it? I don't know. Because right now... Why are you person... in the room for 22 minutes? Yeah. Why are you lying about going to the bathroom? That's that's all lies. Listen, mm -hmm. I've got even... I've got the lab sheets back. Um from the crime lab where we collected samples from the rape kit and one of the things right here on it positive for acid phosphatate activity and I look at that and I go what is that acid phosphatate uh, phosphatase is found in semen in the semen? that's what it says right there in the lab report so I mean, look so I, I, get the, I am now, you know, telling you the truth, and you don't want to take it. Tell me the truth. Start from the beginning. Tell me the truth. Let's, the let's truth the is that uh, I never put my penis in vagina. Did you put? I never put. Eh? What did you put in her vagina? 
I didn't put anything. Oh my gosh. What? What? Who wants help and won't even try and take it? Oh Jesus. Why do you continue to lie? But you, but you're lying. You're lying. You're absolutely lying. You are believing Miriam and don't believe in me. And science. That's yes. the, yeah, that's the, that's and you're the video. You, you've lied about almost everything. You're really good at lying. No, you're no, really, no, no, no. You really are. You're really good at lying. But the polygraph caught you. They caught you. You were lying there. Nadia caught you. Yeah. You they, see? Every time you got a little, the cheek goes up, that smirk. You can't hide it. The, the I think I have never been to a polygraph before. And I believe you have now. And I have now. But yeah, I and you were a liar. I think I think it, that polygraph. Uh, and you kept giving little bits. So after you're caught in a lie, you always you're, you're a quick thinker. You're you're fast. Your brain works fast. It does. And you try and think your way through things, just like when you were here telling your story again today, your lie story. Um, that's all it was, was lies. As you start going through it and telling your story, you're quick at thinking and trying to explain things. When I watched you explaining your story about how the, what happened on January 23rd, with, and I go, okay, that's what he said the first time, and what he just said there? No, that's what I told him, and he's using what I said in his story now. You're really good at that. You're really good at intermingling all the things. Just like when you were caught in the room, and I said, well, why were you in the room for 22 minutes? What were you doing? Why didn't you answer the door? And you go, oh, I had this great pressure. I know I was sitting right next door to the bathroom, but I decided to, to walk down the hallway and then use her bathroom. You also told me when you first went in, if you don't remember, because you don't, or you, you will right here in a second, when you said you went down to a room, you had to use your key because you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I'm sitting there and I realize I don't have my hand sanitizer. And I get up and I go down and I take the key and I unlock, I, I lightly tap on her door, but I figure she'd be asleep so I don't want to wake her. So then I unlock her door and I peek around and she's in her bed and then I go in the bathroom and get my hand sanitizer and come out. That was your very first story. So then when I say, well... The door's open, she motions for you, and you go down there. That's you trying to hide your relationship, because you're like, I don't want them to know that I've got a relationship with this woman. So then, once I say, well, how come you're in there so long? You're like, oh, well, only thing I can think of is I had to go to the bathroom, because that's the only good excuse I can come up with in my head. But you come up with it, and you're like, that's going to get me in trouble with my licensing, and I'm sure that the traditions, which they don't ever want you back in the facility again, uh, those places are going to say, don't want you back. But you know what? That's a good story for Mike to believe. Maybe he'll bite on it, because maybe this is his first damn day working. But I tell you what, I put all of that in my memory bank, and sometimes it goes away, and sometimes it comes back. But when you're sitting there, and I'm watching you, and I'm listening to you, all I'm doing, it hit me. It hit me. I go, Yesterday, I was in a hurry. I was trying to get off the phone with you. I was trying to get off the phone, and you continually kept me on the phone, and you kept saying the same thing over and over. And help me. Help me. You kept saying it. Yeah. Help me, brother man. Help me, Mike. That's what you kept saying over and over again. Over and over and again. And I kept saying over and over again, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. i got to go. I kept trying to rush you because I was trying to get out the door to go to a call. Yeah. And it never sank in. And then while you're sitting here and you're telling your lies, I go, you know what? No. He's I, actually, well, I, I, I thought to myself, my, I'm like, I thought, why is he even my, coming? No, no, no. Listen. My I thought, why is he even coming here to talk to me? What? It's because you want help, but now you won't take it because you're just using their lies. Okay, let me tell you. The yeah, point, tell me something that's not a damn lie. I'm tired of lies. The, the, the point is that the, you've made up your mind. Not to take it. Give me something that's the truth. The truth is that uh, my penis never entered Miriam's vagina, nor her mouth. What was your relationship? What, what did happen? What did happen? She says you laid in bed with her. You laid next to her. You rubbed her breast. I rubbed her breast. She says you kissed and licked her breast. That's the truth. Then that's all. That's not all. That is all, Mike. Please, if you want the truth, take it. That's what it is. No, that what that is is you 
trying to not have people look down on you and think less of you. What that is is a lie so that you can go and say to your wife and to your family, this is all I did. I was weak, but this is all I did. That's what that is. That's what that is. Mike. No, no. Mike, Mike, you're a liar. Just like at the Sheridan with the no, gun around. No, no, no. Why? Don't. Well, don't, we're going to go don't, there. We're going to go don't, there because that, that, that please, I think, should have happened. Don't make me lose my faith because I know God is talking to me through you. Yeah. And I'm telling you to stop lying and do the right thing. And that's exactly what I'm doing, Betty. You are not taking it because you did more than kiss and lick and rub her breast. You absolutely did. And you know that and I know that. And listen, I sit here I listen to you when you told me true stories. I sit here and listen to you when you told me lies. And one of the things I do is I just, I, I don't know how, but I was just born with this where I can sit there and I can eventually pick out when people are lying. And you've got it. I like right there. I see it right on the side of your nose. If your hat's up a little more, I can see it even better. And right there on your right side, I see it every time when that cheek comes up when you're getting ready to lie. I, I don't know. I don't know about all this. It, I, do, this. I see it every time you but tell what I want to tell you, Mike, hmm? I am talking, you know, to God. Right now, who knows the truth? And so do you. So do I. And this is what I am saying now. Please, don't think or make up your mind what to believe before you look for the truth. The truth here now is that I told you the problem why. I lied. Of all these things, and it is more than a hell for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether to commit suicide or to do this thing because I cannot stand it. Because you but when I hear the you know God's voice from your voice, then I'm coming out with exactly what it is. I did not put my pennies in her vagina. I did not put my penis in her mouth. I kiss her breast. I kiss her mouth. If there's anything in me, it's true, only this sauce. I'm not happy to say it, but I'm happy. I know I like her a lot. Hmm? If I have a chance, if I have a chance, outside job to have her as a is a friend hmm? or a wife, I will, because she appeals to me, her makeup of uh, the cleanliness, the arrangement and every, every other thing. In short, I love that woman. I believe that. I love her. Look, let, I am now telling God and he knows, I love that woman because she appeals to me. That is my personal things I like in a woman. Hmm? But unfortunately, I met Miriam in that place that I have hands crossed and all that. But she, of all the time I have been a caregiver, I have never had anything no, uh, any sexual doesn't appeal with anybody anywhere. If you hear that, then tell them it's a lie. It's not God bless. Because why this thing, this woman catch me so much is what I don't know that made me, you know, go that far. And I became so much ashamed, afraid, knowing, you know, what I'm going to lose, what I'm, the people, like you said, I'm going to disappoint, hmm? and I have never done it before, I have never, never done it before, because I have been moving with a lot of people in my life, I never had that catch, you know, that current, eh? that likeness, like I had in, in that woman, especially 
when I went into her room and saw how she kept things and how she is clean, how she arranged things, it was self. I always do quarrel with my wife, you know, for that, you know, kind of thing. She's messy. Is it back too much? So this thing, you know, jump on me and cut most of me. Hmm? To the point that, uh, you know, I was carried away. And by the time I know it, I have done something. Hmm? In which I am absolutely caught. Hmm? But uh, for somebody to take that, to join other things, I'm telling you, it's not me. It's not true. Because I am talking to you, I am talking to God. I have talked to God himself. He knows the truth. And he knows I'm telling you the truth. This is my confession. And each time I call you, and this is why I'm going to respect you to the last day of my life, that you have been able to understand, and I think it is God himself who made it possible for you to understand that I need your help. You, you absolutely do. And the, and the help I need, hmm? I, am, I am not a predator. I am not an evil man. That's what it looks like when you lie, though. But I'm, look, I am not lying now. I have confessed to you why all this lie came. And the, the father of all lies has won. He has caught over me. I lied. Now I'm not going to lie anymore. Because I have had the voice of God. You know, through when you are speaking. It is only person who do not know God that do not know when he talks, when he speaks. Because he himself knows me. Fully well, I know my weakness, he created me. Hmm? So, if he could talk to me through you, then I don't have to be afraid of these other things, but to tell you the instrument eh, he used to make me realize that you are not like you know, every other person I think. That uses someone's, uh, you know, weakness in order to make it, to destroy him, you know, to, you know, to kill him and all the rest of them. Because if anything happens to me, it doesn't happen to me only. It happens to me with a lot of... It happens just like that with everyone. Everyone. It affects everyone. Everyone. It affects everyone. So those things, those choices that you made is not only affecting you, they've affected us. They're affecting your wife. It's going to affect your children. It affects everyone. You're absolutely right. I mean, it affects listen, everyone. I, I believe you're, you're, you're finally, we're taking baby steps. We're taking baby steps. Because I believe you on some of the things. I was not there when this happened. I was not in that room. There was only two people in that room. And that was you and Muriel. No, not two. What do you mean not two? There are three. We are three. What, are you talking God? Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to say God was there, then you also have to believe that Satan was there. Because he was there. That was why he talked to you. So, I was not there to, to see with my own eyes what happened. Yeah. I have to go off of what I am told, what evidence I'm able to gather, and what things I'm able to see. Yeah. And this woman says that more happened than what you said. But she did not say, God bless forced me. She did not say, God bless made me do this. She literally started out and she said, he likes me and I like him. We have a relationship. And then she told me about all the kind things you had done. When I was listening to her talk, it was like listening to someone describe going out on dates with someone. It was like someone describing when they had been dating someone. That's true. That's true. But this part and those things, so if all part, of that is true, and she says, we said, what happened to that, 
that went in that room, and she told me, she told Sarah, you remember Sarah, right? Mm -hmm. And she to told Josephine, three people that night, she told the same thing at different times. All three of us, she told us that you came in that room with her because she wanted you there, and that you laid with her, and that the two of you had sex, or that you had that relationship. I think so. that. And, That's a relationship. And listen, listen, yeah. listen. So here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at. You, 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 all these lies, there's been a lot of them. And I know you're saying now we're done. But you've lied. You lied. I went to the bathroom. You lied. Oh, there's so many lies that it makes it hard for me because I don't know there's any reason for Muriel to be lying about it. So listen, but you, you have reason. All of those reasons we talked about, the family, the fear, the, all that stuff to lie about it, Right. And just like when I confronted you with, why was you in there so long? And then you said, well, I was using the bathroom. Now when I confront you and I say, listen, God bless, you were in that room and you did this with her and we know it and this is what's it. Then you go, well, you know what? I did kiss and I did lick her breast and rub her breast. But then, now you're hung up. You're stuck. You don't want to tell the rest of it because then it makes you look worse. I understand. It makes me feel bad. I, I know. It makes I, me feel bad. Listen. It makes you feel bad. It makes, it makes you me listen. feel bad. That listen. No, 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 no. Listen. But what you're doing is you're making, you're going from, okay, now we're down that relationship. Now you're just, it's like being on a date. It's like when I listen to her talk, I feel like I'm listening to, to the kids talk about and they're going to a drive-in movie or something and they're sitting in the car and they're making out or they're doing something and it just leads one thing to the next. But then you stop it right here, and you change it. And you go, no, it only stops right here at the breast. It instantly changes. It stops, and it goes, now I feel like it's lies. So we're veering off the road, and now what it makes me say is, you know what? Now we're going to predator thing. Now he's in defense mode. God bless is just lying again because he's trying to defend himself because he doesn't want to look bad. He doesn't want to feel bad. So he's trying to defend himself, and now we're going to where, you know what? Is God bless just a predator? Is he somebody? Right. No, no. Is he somebody that's going to all these memory, right. memory care facilities, right. having sex? Now you are talking on your own. You are not, not talking with the voice of God. I, I'm talking with reason. No, no, don't do reason. But you go sometimes. God don't go by reason. Sheridan, the Sheridan, November of 2018. That you don't want to talk about that because you know that was that is not true. Why was that right. condom wrapper that in your pocket? True. Why was that condom wrapper in your pocket? Because that band I wore that day. Hmm? My nephew. No, see, see now, see you were you were getting ready to say son again. You did that whole face thing with the lie. Did you see it? You see it? You, no, 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 you're, no, you're, you're good. No, 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 Mike, don't, horrible, horrible, right there. Don't horrible. judge, don't judge. I'm not, I'm not don't judging people by what you see. What I'm judging you on, I'm not even judging you because I don't judge. I try my best not to judge people. What I'm basing my facts on is the fact that you told two people when they found that condom wrapper in your, when it fell out of your pocket and you pushed one of them away to try and pick it up before they could get to it. When you got that condom wrapper and they started questioning you about it, you said that you were wearing your son's Pants. That's no, no, what no. I called it. That's what I called him. Because my no, nephew. You say here we say, go. You're, you're, you're just twisting the truth. No, no because you're twisting you're, it. Look, you are changing. Take the truth and just no, spin no. it around. You are using the word name, son, and nephew. Because for me, my nephew is my son. And in the way we are. Not able to help you when you're lying, because that's a lie. But I'm not lying, man. No, I'm not. Yeah. You want the condom was in your pocket because you had been in there with this woman and her no. everything. She's completely no. nude. No. Yes, you were. You no. were in that room with her completely nude. I respect you. Because I don't think anything happened there. You probably, I think you got caught before it happened. I think you had that moment of weakness, and I think it happened. You got caught before it happened. Oh my God! No. Like why are you? Why are you doing all this? Why are you saying? Because you keep lying to but me. But it's not. You're lying to me about. I believe you, and I don't believe you. I'm telling you that. I'm not, you did more than lick and kiss and touch her breast. No. Yes, you did. No. You absolutely did. Look, you make this thing easier for me because I had, you know, God's voice in your voice. 
But if you are using it, you know, to put on me the things I know that is not true, that's a lie. It is lie, you say it, but it, for me it's not a lie. I, I don't know what it's going to take with you, because I, I, I really didn't realize until I'm, it's a hundred percent. Who, listen, who listen, don't you agree? When, when you who put my line on? Put a man line on now. You and her laid together, and I believe your penis was in her. Maybe not even that night, maybe not then, but it has been. You have had sexual intercourse with I know that, and you know that. You have had sexual intercourse with You two have made love. You're in love Lord, with that please, woman, and Lord, she's in love with you. Please, Lord, please help me. Help me here. The only way you can heal is by you telling me how to move a path. If I have taken my pennies, Lord, you know it, into her vagina, into her mouth, don't give me anything I desire. Please help me to that, understand. That, that's, that's, no, no. Listen, you cannot, you cannot you're, you're, believe you're what, you, what you just want or what, who you want to believe. I am telling you because I am the person. But you have been the only one who has lied to me. I lied to you. I told you why. I, I spoke with the head charge nurse that was there that night that caught you in the room at the Sheridan. Sheridan? Sheridan and Mason, right down the road from where we are now. She is the one who caught you in there. This woman is smart. She's very smart. She's articulate. She can remember. She remembered right off the date everything. She she's on top of it. The reason being is because she knew bad things happened, and she was not happy about it. She knew, and she got a bad feeling. She even told me from the very beginning. She said when you started working there that you would come over and you would say things that were kind of flirty and almost inappropriate. And she was sassy. She she was a sassy woman, and she says. You know what? I told you right from the beginning. We're not going to have any of that stuff. Don't do that. You come here and you do your work. And she knew, and she got a feeling from you. I, I I've not had that opportunity. I've not been outside of, you know, sitting in a room with you, talking to you. I've not worked with you or been around to be able to have that. But she had a feeling about you that it was just not good. That's the perception I got. And then. She catches you. She sees you walking this resident up and down the hallway, and I, for life, we can't remember the resident's name. She sees you, and she questions you on it because it seemed abnormal. And then later, when she can't find you, she looks around and she goes, where's that resident? She's normally out here in the common area. And, oh, guess what else is missing? You. So she goes straight to that room, and if you remember, they got those little round key fob things, right, that open the doors. Remember those? You just touch them, and it opens all the residence doors. No, no keys. It's just like a little dongle or a key card. And she opens that door, and she says to me what she sees is this woman standing near the foot of her bed, completely naked. You are on your knees facing this woman right in front of her, and in your left hand, you're holding her Depends or a pull up or you know like the adult diaper that she one of those that is clean. You have nothing in your right hand. There are no cleaning supplies around. She said when she asked you what you're doing, you say that she that this resident had soiled herself and you're cleaning her up. She tells you that she will take over and that you can go ahead and leave. You leave the room. She checks this resident out, looks at her. There's no nothing in the trash cans, nothing anywhere where you would have cleaned up where she had soiled. There was no soiled, dirty laundry, nothing there. Nothing, you know, wipes, no cleaning supplies where you would have been cleaning her. She then comes out, and later in the night, what does she do? She catches you with a condom wrapper. A wrapper, no condom in it, a condom wrapper. It falls out of your pocket. And when you notice it fall to the ground, you try to get it as one of the other aides try to get to it. She says you literally push this aid back so you can pick it up. And then you become very confrontational. And you tell them they can't question you. They don't have the right to ask you about that. And then you finally tell them that you're wearing your son's pants, and that must be how that condom wrapper got there. 
She went back to that room and she searched that room. She even looked under the mattress because she knew something had happened. That condom wrapper had been used. And she searched, she even looked in the back of the toilet for where you might have hid it. This was in November of 2018. And you know what? They never reported that to the police. The, wow. the, the manager there is fired. They, they fired him. Do you remember Stewart? Stewart that worked there? They fired him because they squashed it. They didn't report it. They ended up getting investigated and I think got fined. And they never reported it to us. And you thought, and maybe it was the first time for you because that was all the way in 2018, and you thought, well, that was easy enough. I mean, I got caught with a rapper, and I got away with it. I got away with it. Oh, my God. You thought you got away with it. Lord, please. No, 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 no. That's not going to help you. You thought you got away with it, and you didn't. You didn't get away with it because I'm not going to let the evil take over what I think is a good man. I'm not going to let that take over and win. I'm not going to do it. And you lied, and you, you think you're getting away with all that, but you're not. And what I mean by getting away with it, you have to live with yourself. Eventually, you're going to have to tell your wife, this is the mistakes I've made, or this is what's happened. And your family is going to know. I can't save you from that. All I can do is say, you know what, now he's an honest man, and he's doing the right thing, and I can help you with that. And I can do that, but I can't. Change it. You're going to have to face up to the music of what you've done. And in 2018, I think that was when you probably got your first, oh, I could get away with this. And then you started doing it more. I do believe that you love me. I believe that you had a relationship with her. And you know why I believe that? Because she cared about you. I believe she cares about you. Like she liked you. You would bring her snacks. You you were interested in her, right? You asked her what she liked, her snacks, all those things. You brought her those things. You cared about her. You went out of your way to make her happy because I think you fell in love with her. I, I, I absolutely believe that. But I believe you had lapse in judgment and you had moments of weakness. And I believe it started right down the street here. With that woman, that please don't day. Do, don't please. Uh, listen, please. it makes you look. I take you. I take you as the man who always believed the truth. Yeah, but the man, that's the, that everything I just said is the truth, and you know how I also yeah. know because you sat there and you just listened. You knew. You sat there and I watched you. You relived what had happened. Everything I told you about that, everything I said, was that true? Everything that you got caught, you were in that room. That is not true. You, you were never in that room with that woman naked? We are trained. We are trained. We are trained, you know, to be silent when someone is talking. Hmm? What happened? Tell, tell me how that would be. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't try and change here. No, no. I'm not changing anything. Tell me what part of the, what I just said happened to Sharon. Tell me what part of that is not true. Tell no, me. that is not true, Mike. You didn't have a condom wrapper with you? No. Yeah, I have the, you know, it fell off from the pocket. Do you know why I wore that panty that day? Because we oh, got about to hear a lie. Okay. Okay. Tell me Mike, the lie. Go yeah. ahead. Come on. Let's hear the lie. No, no. I know. Come you are, on. You know, you're coming, like you know, you're coming, you're coming, you know. With, I'm tired of the lies. No, no, but the, the point is that you said that you've forgiven me I, for telling you lies and you're coming up with the, you know, uh, then stop telling the lies so I can we can be done with it. Stop telling the lies. I have, stop. Be a bigger man. Stop lying. Stop. Your mom gave you to the Please, church. Please, you man, you man, what, six years old. Six years old, right? Who? You. You said at six years old your mom gave you to the church. That's what you said in your yeah. polygraph. Yes. That's what you said. Is that not true? It's true. Who was your father figure? What do you mean, your father figure? Who was around for you? Who was your father figure growing up? Because you lived all over. He's a priest. He's a priest who was my father figure. You know what? Did something happen to you? Because that's one of the things. Talk to my partner, Jerry. Remember Jerry? You like him a lot too. Yeah. And we talked and I go, what made him go down this path? Because this is a good man that has, something has changed. What made this happen? And and we thought I didn't it. go that did path. Something happened. I didn't to you? go that path. Was was you because you are an investigator? 
Hmm? You talk to people, they tell you what they want, and you believe it. And now, the one I told you the truth, then you are joining them. All this is that is not how to treat so you know someone. Five people, five people, I, and you're saying only one of them you kissed and licked and rubbed your breast. Yes. Only one. Oh, one out of five. Yes. I am, it doesn't seem like very no, no, odds. I am saying it on your face, on the face of God. Yes. You're lying. I'm not lying, but you are accusing me. You're, you're saying that it never happened. What reason does this nurse have to lie about what happened at the show? Don't ask me. Ask her. What, what, why would she lie about this? I don't know. Ask her. She didn't come seeking me out. I went and found them. Because if they know that if this is true, she knew it. it. She knew it. She reported it to all the people she should. She was upset. Matter of fact, the other aide got fired because she got so upset. She exploded on the business on the, the manager over there because they didn't report you. She was so upset that they didn't report you. They fired her and actually had our deputies go and ask because what was they the fired problem. Her. And she reported it to the state. Right, because the you know they fired her. It means that I did the act. No. You did the act because I've got two people from there who says it. I've got one that walked in the room and saw you. The way you okay. explain all this is it is enough, you know, to report the case. But if they do not report it because they know they are making things up, they cannot defend it. Because it is not true. Mike, it is not true. Wait, which is it? Your, your nephew, your cousin, your aunt? Look, your aunt, your uncle. Whose pants were you wearing? Whose pants do you have on right now? My nephew, I call son. Whose pants are on right now? Are these your pants or whose pants are you wearing? No, this is mine because now he's... Is there any condom wrappers in the pockets? You are a policeman. You can search me and see if that is... I'm just, I, I, I just want to know. You know I, what you say? Because... We're getting to that point where I'm getting frustrated with the lie. No, 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 no. I no, thought no. you were doing no, 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 no. that you're lying. No, 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 no. Because don't go back to your word. Because Stop lying. No, don't go back to your word. You said, I lied to you. I apologize. And you said you are forgiving me. And now you are putting the game of a trained dictative on me. With me on the truth I am telling you. You tell me the whole truth. And I, I, I absolutely... That pant I wore that day mm -hmm. belongs to my nephew I call son. Because what's his name? His, his name is Jared. Jared what? Jared Daniel Miller. Where's where's Jared live? Where's Jared live? Now he's in um, West Virginia. West Virginia. Where was he living in 2018? Remember I said. My mom used to say, tell the truth as fast as you can so you don't have time to think of a lie. Well, you're thinking of a lie. You're no, thinking no, no, of a lie. Yes, yes, you are. You're, you're lying. Don't do that. You're lying. Don't, you know, no, you you're don't lying. do that. You're lying. Don't do that. But stop lying. I, I, you know, but I, I'm not used to all this, your system. You're not used to somebody calling you out on your lies. No, 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 no. You're used to being able to no, no. What you're used to being, because what you're used to being able to do is you're used to being able to go to people and go, my name is God bless and God bless you, I love you, and you're used to being able to use that and people going, you know what? I don't want to offend this guy. I don't want to. He's got to be a good guy. I don't want to make him mad because I'm afraid of what might happen. But I can promise you, I know where I'm going, and I know exactly. What kind of man uses that kind of stuff and puts that persona out there is somebody who's hiding something else. And you're an absolute liar. More than what happened with me, it absolutely happened. No, you're a liar. You know you're a liar. No, no, and you're lying to yourself please, because you're afraid my, my, you don't want to get in trouble. I'm please. going through what you're going back. I'm just, I'm not going back to that. We, we know we're past that. We know we're past those lines. We're past that. We're both, we're done. So you walked in that room. She motioned for you. You walked in that room. When you walked in that room, the truth now, because I want to make sure I got a clean version of this, where was she when you walked in that room? On de January 23rd, the night that this happened, when you walked in that room, where was she? Was she laying in the bed? Was she, where was she? She was not on the bed, sitting down, and came up. Okay. So you, you walk in the room, and then what do you say, or what do you guys, what do you say to each other? What do you do? 
I remember Yeah, I think, uh, I believe, she handed me over, you know, um, uh, the remote control. Okay. See, so sure. that's what brought us to, you know. That's why you were saying that. So she hands you the remote control. Yeah. And then what happens? Then they started, you know, opening the, the channels. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is where. You know, so you're she, sitting on the foot of the bed. Yeah, she, you know, she put her hands, you know, on my neck and things like that. Then when I finished, then she came closer to me. Eh? That's, you know, when, you know, you the kissing. Kiss yeah. Okay. So then you started kissing her. So you guys are she kissing. She started kissing me. Okay. You know, on the cheek and all that, you know. I'm ashamed to say all these things. Oh, don't be, because the... If this is the truth, tell us. That's so, the, so you're kissing each other. Mm -hmm. She's kissing you on the cheek. And then you, you already said you both kissed, you kissed on the mouth. Mm -hmm. Then as that happens, then you start touching her breast, rubbing her breast. Uh, you're on this side. You yeah, said because she already. So with your right already, hand. Already she had a, you know. She had a nightgown on so you could just get you in. You know, she had a, had a nightgown, you know, opened. Okay. Uh, that's, you know. It wasn't uh, something I started, you know, opening her nightgown okay. and things like that. So you saw. So I kiss, you know, I, you know, I kiss her, you know, breast. Okay. That's all. So you're kissing, licking her breast, rubbing her breast. I can't call it. I can't call it licking. It's just, you know, you know, just a kiss. You know, it was a sharp kiss and things like that. I, I didn't. I didn't continue it as a, you know, as a process and things like that. Because I'm ashamed to say all these things because uh, it was something that went fast. Yeah? It was something that, you know, went fast. I'm not proud of it. Yeah? I'm not proud of it, yet I don't regret it because I love the woman. I love her. She appeals to me. Yeah? I told you. Because if I say I don't, it, is, it, it means disappointing her and letting her down. Hmm? And the, I'm not, I will not be saying the truth. So in this case, hmm, I realized I shouldn't be doing that. And I did it. And I am mad. I was mad. And still mad at myself. Why I could be so, you know, weak. Hmm? Weak in the sense because... It involves where I walk. It involves, you know, uh, what is the rule and regulations. Hmm? But in the actual, in the actual life, you know, I took this just trying to get the story of what happened, and every time I try to, it turns into you trying to defend yourself, trying to only caring about you, like. All you care about is you and what's going to happen to you or what what you have done or how you get past this. You never, you, you still, even after she just went over this with you, you, you try and make it sound, you, le you lessen everything. Like, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, I just I just kissed it a little bit. I just did this. You, you, Mike, please. I, I, no, 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 no. I'm so tired of that. You cannot be tired. Because I am because... You just keep trying. All you care about is yourself. You're the most selfish person was that? ever. You, you, you're selfish. You only care about yourself. But I you told don't you, care about any of these but people I told you I that think. you were employed to take care of. You don't care about them at all. What you were doing? Now you come. I, now I'm coming. I'm now coming. you come. You see, I this. think that you're a sexual predator. I think that you have preyed upon all of these women. I think. All oh, no, 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 no. Yes, I think that you have preyed upon all of them. I think that you preyed upon the lady, the Sharon. I think no, 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 twin towers. And I know for a fact. Let me know. If you, so, if you say that, that's exactly it, what it is. You are it is a not. predator. That's probably why you got to not to help people. You it is not. Them. It is not. It is not. It is not. <laughs> you keep saying that, but you know it's true. But it's not You're true. Ashamed. You're ashamed of it. But you know it's true. You're a predator. You're preying upon these weak, oh my God. women. That's what you're no. doing. 
Who does that other than a no, monster? No, please. That's what you are. You're a monster. No, yes, please. Yes. You absolutely are a monster. You're preying upon them. And then you continue to lie about what you're doing. I don't know why. I, I sit here and I, I wanted to help you, but now I'm to the point where I, I just, I'm done with your lies. You what have done it? these what things. Why are you saying all this? Because you're a liar. I'm not. And you only care I'm about yourself. I'm not now. Yeah. I told you. Why? You did more than kiss and lick and touch her breast. You absolutely did. There is no oh way I'm going to believe oh your my. lies over oh you my God. three people. Please, I did not do more than that. Why, why is it difficult? You have, you have learned throughout the time what you could get away with, and you've just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I think it escalated up to Muriel was the one you finally had intercourse with. I think that you were working up to it with the other ones. Or you did. No, 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 I didn't. Mike, I didn't. I know you did with Muriel. I hope it is important to me that you know that I said I didn't. It, it's important... That you you don't need to, to believe your lies, and I'm not. No, 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 no. Yeah. But this time, this time I told you why the lie. I asked you for. I know why you're lying. I, I understand Please. why you're lying. You're lying. What I'm telling you, you, what I'm you, telling you, when I call you the name of God, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. You cannot say that I put my penis in her. Vagina and her mouth. I didn't do that. If I did that, I would tell you. I didn't do that, Mike. Please. I didn't. Try to. At least give me. At least give, give me benefit of doubt. Benefit of doubt is because you don't so want... So you're saying the woman that you just said, if she was not living there and she was out that you love, is a liar. That's what you're saying. Because you can't have it both ways. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. You see, you said... I'm doing, I'm doing said, God bless you. Said that, you, know, she doesn't know, you said that she doesn't know what she's saying. That she doesn't. She doesn't. But when she's three people right there together, she's telling the same story. That's accurate. She, if she, I go to her today, she probably is not going to remember it. Today, she's not going to know. Did, Mike... Do you but want then, Mike, right you, when it happened, you want me to tell you? Do you want to me to tell you that I put my penis in her vagina and her mouth? She told me that you laid with her in the bed. But I didn't do course. that, Mike. Well, and let me clear. We didn't say that she didn't know what she was saying. She didn't know it was going to get her in trouble. Yeah. She didn't know it was she wrong. She thinks it's a relationship. Yeah. She repeated exactly what you guys. She told the truth. I didn't say that she but, wait, that this, she didn't know what she ma, was saying. Ma, she was telling the ma, truth. This, at, just ma, she, she was telling the truth, <coughs> but she didn't know it was going to get you guys in trouble. But this part, this part of the penis and vagina and the mouth didn't happen. So because so, you know, oh, so you want me to believe that this all just you went straight from the first time ever doing anything with her. You're sitting on the end of the bed and you're you're kissing, licking, touching her breast, and her motioning, like you said earlier, you said like she had done before, where she would motion when she wants you to come there. You're saying that that one time, that was the only time you ever did anything, was right then. There's there's no way it happened more than that. Oh uh, no, this is you saying that. It's, it is you saying that. It doesn't that. make sense. And, and I think why you say that, because you are in the position to say that. Because your voice and your authority is to be heard, not mine. But the truth is that I did not, either before or that day. So it is two different things. So whatever you believe is what you know the law will believe. Whatever you say... Whatever you choose to do to me is what the law will concur and believe that I did. But I am so happy mm, that I'm telling you right now that those things, I didn't do it. I'm ashamed the, the far I go, the things I did. I'm not happy about it. I'm ashamed of it. I'm uh, on my mad about myself for it. I think of, you know, all things around. But that is not going to make me mm, accept 
The things you said I did, which I know, I didn't do it because I'm the one eh, who did. I didn't do that. You sat right across me with the same conviction, saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do anything, I didn't touch that woman, nothing sexual at all. You sat here the first time we talked and you told me that you didn't. You are coming back. I, you're wanting me to believe I, you now, and I don't know how I this can. Is, you see, I can't understand why you go back to someone who confessed to you and say he repented, he is sorry, and asked for forgiveness, the lies he told you before. Because if I told you lies before, I am not telling you lies now. It is two quite different things. So because I told you lies before, which means everything I confess, I am telling the truth, it is lie to you. Which means you are not prepared to hear the truth. Because it's a half-truth. It's not half-truth because I am the one hmm, who really repented. I really want to say what happened. And that wouldn't make me, you know, to collect the things I know that I didn't do, that it didn't happen. <clears throat> By the grace of God, I cannot do that. He knows I didn't do it. Have you ever, have you prayed to him for him? Hmm? Or has it just been for yourself? I think I said it, you know, I said it when I was starting. I prayed for us. Steady, every day, every night. I asked God to, you know, protect her. I asked God... To, to protect her from what? Hmm? To, to, from someone else in the facility doing what you did? No, you know, protection is protection. God knows, you know, how he distributes his protection. Then I asked her, I asked God, you know, to bless her. And probably, you know, to get whatever her problem is, not continue increasing. To make her to make her whole, to make her well, to make her fit. Well, you do understand. She's in a dementia unit. She's not getting well. She's not going to move out. She's not going to be... It, it, so, that your, is, fan, your fantasy, were you living... That is what, with that's her? what man says. But if God wants, nothing is impossible to him. So, when I have the feelings, you know, to... So, you were going to leave your wife? Eh? You're, so, you were going to leave your wife for her? I'm going to leave If my... she was out of the facility, were you going to divorce your wife to go be with her? Or would you have her on the side? I don't think I, I, I ever thought about that. Because what you just said now... It is about that. Didn't he say that if she was out, you would yes, continue the relationship? Longer, yes. So are you going to leave your wife mm -hmm. to be with her? All I, mean, all I know is that if she is out or free... I would like to continue seeing her. Behind so, so I think we can. So adultery is okay. No, no, no. no <laughs> I mean, I think that's one of those ten commandments. No, no, yeah. no. You know, you are talking about. No, that's why I said yes no, no, no. or no. Yes or no. Seen her. Okay, it's a yes or no question. Would you leave your wife to be with her if she was out and God made her better? Uh, yes. You would leave your wife. I will. I can assure you that. That, that you're worried. So, but you don't want your wife to know the truth because you don't want to hurt her and her leave you, which is a possibility if she knew what you were doing with her. But if out, you'd hurt your wife and leave her? I, I don't understand. That's a, that's you see, you are a woman. Hmm? I'm a man. Sometimes things go by feelings. Because you ask me yes or no question. But when you throw that question to me, I gave you the answer my heart, you know, gave to me. So I really do believe that you and me had a sexual relationship as a married or boyfriend, girlfriend, while she was at, while you worked at the facility. But I believe, you know, that this is imposing it on me. That my truth is that if sex relationship means taking pennies, put in the vagina, taking pennies, put in the mouth, it didn't happen. I am going to say it even on the top of the mountain. 
whether you believe it or not. So because he, I have decided to tell the truth. I have lied and repented and asked forgiveness for it. Don't use it against me. Hear me out now. This is what I tell you that what happened. Please. We're not using it against you, but you lied. The whole th story that you gave me, there's a reason I asked you to tell me your version of events. The, and, I knew you, and, and I kept my mouth shut. I knew it you were lying. It is the same thing. And I knew. The same, you know, the same fear, the same shame, the same everything. By the time Mike was talking to me, hmm, by the time he was talking to me, he might think that that is his voice. But I had the voice of God, you know, through him. Hmm? Immediately, the spirit of God in me. And, and, me he, and, and he told you to lie to us? And? and he told you to lie to both of us? He told me to stop lying to you and start telling the truth, and that is where I am now. Yet, as being man and woman and all these things, you are not believing me. You want me to, you want me to accept the thing you believe that happened. I want you to quit believing your own lies. No, no. You, you want me to say yes. The, my police. No, I want you to tell the truth. Yes, that's exactly. You know, people always fond of that. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Why in their in their mind they want you to tell them what they want to to hear from you? But this time around, I am speaking boldly because I have decided to say the truth because I cannot continue making lies. But at the same time, I'm not going to accept what didn't happen. My penis in her vagina or my penis in her mouth. That did not happen. Did you ever lay on the bed with her and not have sex? Just hold no. each other? No, I didn't. Please. I didn't. Well, well that wouldn't be any, any different than you sitting on the edge of the bed kissing is her. It, the one I did... The one, the one I did is what I told you. But when you talk about lying on the bed, eh? <laughs> to me, I did not lie. I did not lie on the bed. I sat on the bed with her. Well, I'm talking about any time, not just that day. No, no. So why would she come in, a, in, in an open... I mean, her she had a nice little nightgown on. And I believe that you do How think did she's... How did it get open? Because it was closed... When she was at the door. When you were at the door, like a matter of a few seconds before you got there. So she was... See, the point, is, the point is, this is the part of the lie we talked about. We are not there. If you want to help me, if you want to consider me, if you want to help me, if you will have pity on me. I mean... Please, there is no, there's no need... That's you, right over here's where the key is, there's your spray bottle, and there's another camera at the other end that shows her room very well. Mike, not lying. There's you getting the key Mike, and walking to her. You know, She's you, still standing. Look, you're walking to her. There's her leg. She is still standing there, and the other camera, you can see her nightgown is closed. That's Mike, so that, I'm not I'm Mike, just saying the facts. The, no, fact. no, this, this is... Did she walk in no, and immediately unbutton This her? is persecution. Persecution in the sense that uh, we have talked about my lying. I lied to you, I'm sorry. I, I asked for, for your forgiveness. Forgive me, I repeat it again. How did her blouse, how did her nightgown get unbuttoned? Was it unbuttoned when you went in? There's no way it was. You said, eh? you said when you walked in and you sat down there with her, it was already unbuttoned. There, there's no way. Yeah, because it's closed. It's closed. Yeah, maybe she must have unbuttoned it herself. I didn't unbutton it, uh, her, you know, her. I didn't do that. You see, not everything case that, you know, happens that I am the one that did it. Hmm? Because... Uh, well, evidently well, nothing that has happened it was your fault. Yeah. Is, that's exactly what I am telling you. But, but that's not true. It is your fault. You were paid. You mean you, you mean, were put no, in that no, no, facility. No, you were put I didn't say it's our fault. You were you were put in that facility to protect her. You see, if I don't know that, I wouldn't be mad at myself. 
I wouldn't be ashamed. I wouldn't be, you know, afraid. No, but you would have some remorse for her. I have remorse. But uh, you have remorse for you. You want forgiveness for yourself. You do not do care you know, that that resident is not going to see you do again. Do you know the remorse I have? The remorse I have is that she is there in this facility. How I wish she is a, a woman out free. And I saw her the way she is. Okay, so let's... Did you, and I, this is, I'm just curious about this, because you said that you liked her because she was clean. Is her body and soul clean? Because you keep saying clean. And to me, it's not just organizational stuff. It's her... It's her age, personality. It's her, body, it's her, her personality. What she wears is neat. Hmm? Sitting beside her, she smells nice. So she is one of the residents that keeps takes care of herself. She, she is absolutely, you know, clean, nice, you know, in, even there are people you sit behind with that when they talk, you hear the, you know, mm -hmm. the order of the, you know, the distance. Not, I didn't hear that. Do you understand? And the, um, the way, the way she arranged things and the, the way, you know, she, she likes to do things and the, the way she dresses. Because when you see her, she doesn't look any bit anybody that has, you know, dementia, you know, problem. Because everything is accurate. Everything is at the time, you know, it has to be. You know, the much I know her. Do you understand? So all these things appeal to me first. You see? The way I am mad at myself is knowing better I allowed my weakness mm, to take upper hand of me and things like that. So now it has brought me with shame and everything, then I had to lie. Please, I'm sorry. I really am. Because I think when God comes into it, <clears throat> the only thing I understand actually is who you are. Is who you are in the front of God. Because the way I had him talk through him means that it's a confirmation that I can confide. I can come up with you know the truth to the people in front of me. Because my fear that brought all this fear is I know people that use people's weakness and faults and mistakes in order to destroy them for life, in order to put them in jeopardy. You know, you know, without knowing how to escape. But again, you're telling that, so you're saying that people use what you do against you to run your life. But you, is free will. You make a decision. I am the one. The person who I, makes a decision. I, their I, I am the, the one who failed myself first. Because if I was thinking, if I was thinking, if I was thinking of all this, Mm -hmm. Before, you see, when they talk of someone's weakness and the devil's, uh, you know, rims on someone, I never knew that uh, it could lead you to, you know, not thinking right and doing wrong and come back to know the right and be ashamed of it. You see, so all these things. Maybe if I had not, if I had not had God talking, you know, through him, I may continue have, you know, considering you people are the people that are looking for something to, you know, tie me up and throw me, you know, with a, you know, a big weight into the sea. Because I know that I have repented. I know I have been hard on myself 
because of that. And I know that it will never happen again because I have learned my lesson. And I never did it before. I never did it before and I'm not going to do it again. So help me God. So out of five residents, this is the four of them are all, well actually lying too. So all five of them are lying, but you're telling us the truth. After you've lied several times. You see? Don't go back to the lie. We have see, to, I mean... We no, have no, to. no, because the point is that if you, if you know, if you forgive, hmm, it's a different thing. I know what forgiveness is. Okay, if you forgive, you cannot use what you have forgiven, you know, on things like that, because when you come back to that, which means you are helping the devil to persecute me. But I am not going to allow it because I have decided to say the truth, to talk the truth, to tell you the truth I know. I am not going to fall into that uh, devil's uh, 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 tricks now anymore. At the same time, I am not, because I admitted I lied, I'm going to accept what I know I did not do. Because I know I didn't do it. Because these people, five or whatever number, is, it, is an opportunity. The devil is collecting. Because I know when, when I serve God, or when I'm doing things I think that I'm doing the work of God, the devil is not going to put the red carpet for me. I know that I'm going to have oppositions. I'm going to run into problems because I listen to my heart. Okay? Sometimes listening to my heart, I run into violating rules and regulations like you have just mentioned to me. Hmm? But I feel better when I follow my heart and see the result. And sometimes most of these things are not discovered and things start going all right. And the person start being okay. You see the point? Because I have no idea what we're talking about now. Well, you what, the idea, what you have to have idea is what when I know that someone like someone, you know, get um, get accident on the road. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's use a good Samaritan story. Mm -hmm. Then someone says, okay, I don't want to get mixed up. I don't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. He lied there, he lied there, then he start going into his business. Mm -hmm. Until that Samaritan who is not religious, the priest passed, the other things pass because they have something important to do. They don't want to get involved. But this good Samaritan, you know, came and took care of him and see that he's a victim and done it. He took care of him. Mm -hmm. And he always, you know, spent his time to take care of this thing and pay the bills. This is the kind of things that happen. Like, I'm a COVID caregiver. Mm -hmm. I, I see someone who is not a COVID patient eh? and I know he or she needs me, he needs my help. No matter what that help is, eh? I abandon it and ignore it completely because I want to be on the right, not mixing because she's not my patient. But you didn't go down there because she needed, you went down there because you two have a relationship. You said, like, she how she motions for you. you I mean, a, we should take a break, probably. No, no, we, but listen, we've been in here for a long time. You haven't drank much of your water. Do you need to go to the bathroom or anything? No, I think uh, for yeah. now, I don't care. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I've got to go, so I don't know if you do or not. But okay. I drank one of those, and I'm already halfway down on that one. So do you, do you need to go to the bathroom or anything? I'm no, no, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here yeah, waiting for you. Okay. I'm going to hit the, the bathroom real quick. Okay. Oh. Oh, do you have yeah, to do a thing? The weirdest <laughs> thing, yeah. Be right back. Um, left.
sure you didn't have to go to the bathroom or anything? I'm not, not taking, I'm not taking anything this morning to print. No medicine to help you pee or something? I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I, we were talking on the way back. We both have to go to the bathroom. And I was like, I don't know that there's anywhere else we need to go. I feel like we're just arguing back and forth. And I was like, you know what? I think it's just time we just shut her down and then we'll just go to our separate corners. And, and you see it? Please, can you hear me out now? Okay. Can you hear me out? Sure. Okay. I don't know why all these things are happening. I know one thing. I'm not a criminal. And I have never committed any crime. So, you work in a long-term memory care facility with dementia patients. That's the places that you work. You worked in one with and is a memory care patient. <clears throat> she is childlike. We both know she is not someone who can make the best decisions for herself. And while working there is her caregiver, someone who is in charge of her and supposed to be tasked with taking care of her. I have not finished. Before. Uh, Let and, me no, no, no. I ask you to but you're saying out. that you're not a criminal. You absolutely are a criminal. So you sat there, and you go down, and you you fondle her breast, you lick her breast, you kiss her breast, you kiss her. You you are taking complete advantage of someone. It's no different than if that was a small child that was there. That's what you're doing. And to say that just because you are in love with the fact that she's neat and she's clean and she does all of these things that you find appealing, that your wife doesn't do, and your wife is not doing these things for you, so you're going to find someone else, and that is... You're going to do this at the place where you work? How do you think her family feels? Do you think her sons want you taking advantage of their mother? Do you think her two sons would be happy with you going and fondling and kissing and licking their mother's breast? Do you think they would be happy with that? Do you think they would say, oh, that's okay? I think that's a criminal act. So, I, I've heard you out, I've heard you out. What we should do now is we should end this because we are still lying. We're not going to come to compromise on it. It's obvious. And what I, I tell people when I do polygraphs and I do other things in here myself, I tell people I don't let liars stay in my room. I don't like it. So, I'm going to ask you to leave now because I just don't want to hear any more lies. So, I don't want you in my room anymore. I want you to leave. I'm asking you to leave because I'm tired of listening to your lies. If you want to tell me something that's the truth, I would hear that, but I'm tired of the lies. So I'm done. I'm done listening. I'm done hearing you out. I'm done listening to you try and plead for mercy on yourself and help for yourself when you don't think about these victims any whatsoever. And I say victims because it's not just one. So I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to hear you out anymore. Listen, my, listen, listen. My, no, please. You're, you're, you're speaking. Please. You're spewing evil and lies. Please. I'm done. Please. My, so we're done with please. talking today. Please. Listen. Please listen. Listen. What I'm going to do, I'm, 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 I'm straightforward. You. You've come in. You've been able to leave. Please. Anytime please. Long. I'm going to present my case please. to the prosecutor's office. I am going to see what charges they would want to do with you. And I will, I, I'm not, uh, I'm going to call you once everything is, if there's charges, whatever. Please. I will keep you updated. I'm not going to be any shocks or surprises. But that's what's going to happen. There's no reason for us to sit in here any further and for me to listen to you plead for your own benefit of trying to compel me to care enough to try and take care of you. My job is to take care of these victims who can't take care of themselves. And that was your job. That was your job, and you failed. You didn't take care of them. You molested. That's what you did. You didn't take care of. You molested them. You took advantage of her. You rubbed her breast. You licked her breast. You kissed her breast. This is an elderly woman who can't remember stuff, who in, lives in a, a facility. You took advantage of her. I don't care if you're in love with because she's clean, whatever. You 
molested her. You took advantage of her. And I believe that you took advantage of all four of those other people I know about. Oh I am certain that you took advantage of the lady at the oh Sheridan and Mason. I'm certain that you did the other ones. Oh and God. all you want to do is lie, so I don't want to hear any more. I don't, listen, listen. Mike, don't God bless. Listen. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want to hear more lies. Okay? So it's time for us oh to say God. our farewells and Please. go. Because there's nothing I can do Please. for a liar. It's time to go. Please. Let's go. Please. Listen. Please. Listen. I want to Please. respect you, but I can't because you just lie. You lie, lie, lie. And you only care about yourself. And I just, I can't respect that. I'm sorry. I don't like being mean. Do you think I, I, I enjoy saying these things? Because I, I feel like I'm being very hurtful. Oh, my God. But I don't want to listen to any more lies. I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. I just, I hear one right after the other. So we're done. So let's go while we're still, we can be cordial and we can be, you know, I can call and tell you, hey, this is what's going on. I can update you. But for right now, I just can't take any more lies. Do you understand? Why do you think I'm lying after I have a, I apologize and start telling you the truth? Because you are. You, you, you're trying to save yourself is what you think. But you're it's not. To... I'm mad with myself. As, as, as you should with... be. You took advantage of me. No. Yes. So if her sons were here right now and we said, hey, this is what he just he's done to your mother, do you think they would just be great with it and happy? Would you be, if, if your mother was in a facility like that and somebody was doing this with her, would you be happy? Would you be happy? So do you want to tell me any more that's the truth, or do we need to leave? I want you to believe me that I'm telling you the truth okay. now. Uh, I'm done. Are you done? I'm done. I'm done. Okay. All right, God bless. Let's go so I can get you out to the parking lot, and it's 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 time to go. Let's go. You can go home and... And you're going to have to live with yourself on all this stuff, okay? I'll get this one. Come back. Please, can you help me? I, I can't help you because you keep Please, asking me that, but you me the benefit of doubt. I can't. It's time for you to go. It's, I, I'm tired of liars in my room. It's time to go. Sorry. Not lying to you. I'm telling you what I want to do. It's lies up. Okay.